this video, I am talking about my hospital birth experience versus my home birth experience. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Caitlin Hill. If you haven't already subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and like and share this video. I'm not generalizing here. I am speaking from my own personal experience and I am not giving out any medical advice. So if you've been following me for a while, you will know that my first birth with my daughter Safia was in the hospital and my second birth was at home with twins right outside these doors right here. And they are both really special and magical experiences in their own different ways. And they were very, 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 very different births. And I definitely learned a lot from the both of them. Basically with my pregnancy with Safia, this was my first birth. I had chosen to have a hospital birth and I felt very much a sense of anxiety from the end part of my birth there was sort of like there was like a clock constantly ticking in my head about when how much longer was I gonna be able to be pregnant for when was the baby gonna come how was it gonna come it was all very like scary and sort of anxious and there was a lot of fear kind of like looming over how this was gonna happen there was a bunch of like tests and things that I had to do and sort of like it's very like oh how's the baby gonna come out kind of um feeling <laughs> And it was, yeah, it wasn't like super relaxing. It was very, none of it felt very trusting in the process. It was very like, okay, how is this gonna happen? When is this gonna happen? I wasn't able to go past a certain time, which is 42 weeks. And sort of when that deadline happens, then I was going to have to be induced. And, and that's not what I wanted for myself. So it was sort of like just a lot of pressure in the end. When my labor did start with Safia, I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea what it was gonna feel like. And I felt like, the the advice that I was getting wasn't actually what I was supposed to be hearing. And again, this is my first baby, so I had no idea what to expect. I just remember like being at home here with Matisse and my first contraction starting and immediately thinking to myself, okay, like I'm in it now, like this is starting, it's, it's happening, what are we gonna do? Like the clock was ticking what when are we gonna go to the hospital you know when is the baby coming is it coming out now like I had no concept of the time it was gonna take or what was going to happen or what I was supposed to be feeling and I felt like the advice that I was getting from my care providers in that situation was sort of not clear I kind of wish that I had been around someone that was very clearly like this is supposed to take this long you are supposed to feel pain. You, birth is, can be challenging. Take your time. There's nowhere you have to be. Relax and just know that the process is happening and that your body is doing exactly what it's meant to be doing. And instead, the advice that I got was to run up and down our stairs, do these like hip shake things that I must have done like 5,000 times. Kind of like get the baby out, get the baby going, like get it going, like let's speed up the process. Which I look back on now as being not the right advice. Even though I felt so informed in that birth, I felt very like I didn't know what was going on. By continuing to try to get the baby out, even physically I was trying to get the baby out, but even just mentally trying to get the baby out, was so much pressure. Even before my labor had even started, it was like, okay, you know, you're coming up to 42 weeks. So coming up to 42 weeks, I started getting text messages from my care providers, like eat spicy food, go on the exercise ball, have sex. I also was recommended by my care provider, which was a midwife um, that I should, when I was getting to the end, that I should take the labor cocktail, which is basically like verbena and castor oil and a mix of other things. And I was recommended that I take that to kind of get things going and to get the baby out because the baby had to come out before 42 weeks. And I look back on that now and that mixture is, is extremely dangerous to take and I would never take that. When I look at sort of like full term onwards and after with my second birth, 
I put no mental energy or thought into trying to get the babies out whatsoever. Even though I was so uncomfortable and I was carrying so much weight from two babies and I totally wanted to get things going, I didn't wanna put any extra energy into getting those babies out whatsoever. Just focused on resting, getting into, tuning into myself and my inner wisdom and really pampering myself and allowing myself to just do yoga, meditate, eat really good food, relax basically, and, and not try to, to push something that naturally is going to happen. Mother nature works perfectly and I just knew that those babies were gonna come when they were supposed to come and I didn't have to try to press it or push it whatsoever. So that was the mass, most, the biggest difference between my um, pre-labor uh, hospital birth versus home birth is just, I went from like trying to like get this baby out so intensely to just like knowing and trusting that it was gonna happen at the right time in the right place and the way that it was supposed to without me doing anything, me or anyone else doing anything to get it started. Once the labor actually did start, the labor that I had for my first baby was very, again, it was kind of like I didn't know what to expect and it just felt like that clock was just always ticking. I didn't know how it was gonna start, when it was gonna start, what it was gonna feel like, and I just felt like it all felt like it was taking too long and it just felt like my body wasn't naturally progressing the way that it was supposed to. Again, because it felt like everything was just taking too long. I almost felt like embarrassed about the fact that I wasn't giving birth faster. And like, it's just so ridiculous. So the labor of my hospital birth compared to my home birth was that during my home birth, I just very much embodied, Sarah Buckley always says, private, safe, and unobserved. To have a natural, gentle, mammalian birth, I really felt that I was in the right place, knowing that I didn't have to go anywhere. I just knew that I didn't matter how long it was gonna take, I wasn't concerned about that because I knew that it could take days that I could be in labor and that that's normal and that's okay. It didn't mean that there was something wrong with me or that my body was broken. It just meant that that's how my body was getting the babies down and working the babies down and that's what it needed to go through in order to just slowly open up and allow the babies to come out. Again, I felt private, safe, and unobserved in my space, in my labor, with my home birth, and I just could do whatever I wanted. It was so freeing and great to just know that I had specifically picked exactly who I wanted to be here, which was my partner, Matisse, my daughter, and my doula, who I very specifically hand-picked instead of the doula that I had given to me through the hospital, that I didn't choose myself for my hospital birth, this was very intentional and very specific and I just knew that she was the right energy that I wanted to have around me and supported me in what I wanted for my birth. It was, yeah, I was in labor, I was working hard, I was screaming, I was yelling, but I felt much more comfortable going to that place the second time around because I knew that that was where I wanted to go. And, and where I needed to go. Yeah, the early labor, again, it was like, I kind of, like I knew what a contraction felt like. And even though I knew what it felt like, it still felt intense, but I just knew that it was intentional and that it was working and that it was doing exactly what it was supposed to do. And I had worked so much deeper internally before my second pregnancy rather than my first. And I really went to just knowing that the contractions are there because they are pushing your baby down. And so I learned to go along with it and not try to work against them as much. And I think a lot of it also had to do with the fact that I knew that I wasn't gonna have to be like running out the door to go to the hospital. And with my hospital birth, when we did go have to get into the car to go to the hospital the first time, it was very just like, oh my God, just getting my shoes on and stepping foot out of the door and going to a place that didn't feel safe. Um, it's, this isn't my, 
my natural territory. I remember stepping foot in the hospital and like having random strangers staring at me while I'm like having contractions just at the door. And that was doing nothing but closing my body up like this and not wanting to open up like a flower and allow the babies to come out. It was like, you're just on display in the hospital. It's like, okay, this girl's having a really long contraction and I'm just gonna watch her through it. And it was just like very, very, very uncomfortable. So I went to the hospital the first time and they gave me a shot of morphine because I had been laboring all night long and I was only two centimeters, which <laughs> doesn't mean anything to me now. I felt like from my perspective at that time that I wasn't progressing and no one told me that it's normal. It's totally normal to, for your birth to take a long time, for your body to open up slowly. And frankly, I don't care about um, dilation whatsoever anymore. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just like a number on a scale that they can tell you when you can start pushing, which I just don't believe in, which is just so unintuitive with just knowing when you're supposed to start pushing rather than being like you're 10 centimeters, you have to start pushing now. So that's a whole, we'll save that for another day. But so went into the hospital, had a shot of morphine and then they were like, well, you're not ready to start pushing. So we'll send you back home. So I went back home, slept for a little bit and basically woke up to my contractions starting again. I also just wanted to make a point about the fact that I was given a shot of morphine where throughout my entire pregnancy, I was told that, you know, stay away from seafood, stay away from, you know, anything toxic, which I'm very conscious of. And suddenly I go into the hospital and it's okay for me to take morphine. That just is like very, very odd to me. So fast forward to we go back home and I got to sleep a little bit and Again, the advice that I got from my care provider, Dula at the time, was that we had to like get going again. So like we had to wake up and like try to get the baby out again. Like let's, so basically from like 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. I was running up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. Let's get the baby out, let's get the baby out. This Where when I look back on it now, I'm like, why wasn't it just lying, relaxing, resting in bed, having contractions? Maybe like I could have had a little bit of food put on a movie or listened to some music or did a meditation or just hung out rather than like literally doing a marathon to get this baby out. When we flip back over to my, my home birth, I was just like going through the contractions, just allowing them to happen. Everything was just happening and unfolding the way it was supposed to. I could get on the exercise ball if I wanted to. I could get in the bath if I wanted to. I could eat if I wanted to, I could, you know, do whatever I wanted to. And I think that was just so amazing to feel that sense of just absolute sovereignty and freedom and knowing that I was making my own choices every step of the way and just feeling so chill about it and knowing that I was in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Back to my hospital birth, we came back home and then we had a midwife come check me again. She's like, you're only two centimeters still. And then I decided to go into the hospital and when I got admitted into the hospital, once I signed into being admitted into the hospital, suddenly I'm completely under their liability. Just felt very observed. They're immediately just like pushing Pitocin on me, which I took and then started, proceeded to have like the most intense contractions of my life because of course I'm on a synthetic version of oxytocin, which doesn't transmute into my body whatsoever. I had an epidural because I, my body couldn't handle the strength of the contractions that I was having. And I am being told that I'm only still at two centimeters. So just screaming at the top of my lungs. I had this realization just now that I, and this is again, just my own thought and perspective, something that I think to be true. It's really hard to have a natural birth in the hospital. And it's hard to have just a birth in the hospital with Pitocin without having an epidural or having a C-section because I wouldn't have actually been able to go to the place that I needed to go to in the hospital in order for my birth to progress. I had a bunch of strangers standing around staring at me. I felt embarrassed about how loud I was screaming 
and I felt so on display and I, I honestly felt kind of like I was like a caged animal that they just wanted to like tame. They, they sort of wanted to just get me in the bed, get the epidural in me and calm me down so that the birth could end. <laughs> is sort of how I feel. I think that in that setting with the bright lights and the atmosphere, it's just not a place to be, had to have a natural mammalian birth and to allow for physiological birth to unfold the way that it's supposed to. I know that I definitely was not informed enough to know that like I would have literally had to have batted people off of me if I wanted to have a natural birth in the hospital. In comparison to my home birth, I was a wild animal. I was full blown in mammalian mode. I was like yelling, screaming. I didn't want a stitch of clothing on me. I didn't even want jewelry on me. I remember I had this gorgeous medicine bag that a friend had made for me and I was like ripping it off and I was banging on the walls, I was roaring. I was literally roaring like a wild animal. And I needed to feel that in order to have my birth progress. Just like what Sarah Buckley says about private, safe and unobserved are the only things you need to feel in your birth. That was what I felt. I felt like I was in my natural habitat doing exactly what I, my body knew how to do because it had created these babies, it had grown these babies, and it was damn well about to birth these babies. And I just knew that I was safe and that I just needed to go through each and every wave, each and every contraction, each and every moment. And even when I felt like I wasn't gonna get through every contraction and I remember yelling and screaming, help me, save me! Like, can you imagine if I had been yelling, help me, save me in the hospital, they would have been like, oh, okay, let's just give her more uh, epidural, get her laying down in the bed where we can contain her and she can be quiet and she can just have the baby all lying on her back. You know, I was like, Ooh, in any position that I wanted to be in, I didn't care about dilation whatsoever. I just waited for my body's instinctual message that told me that I was ready to push. And I had no idea how dilated I was when I started pushing. I literally just felt like I wanted to start pushing. And so I started pushing and it felt great. So yeah, that was definitely a huge, huge difference. I would have never been able to let go to the place that I needed to let go to in the confined walls, white walls of the hospital. I needed to be free in my space and free in knowing that I was just comfortable. I felt very comfortable. I was in the water. We had the birthing pool just beside the doors here. And um, my doula continued to just take out the cold water and fill it in with the hot water. I always had a hand to hold and I always had positive, beautiful advice, exactly what I needed to hear all the time. I had my daughter right by my side. Uh, it was all very just trusting and beautiful and knowing. Oh, it was just, I just got goosebumps. So in the hospital when, after I had had the Pitocin and the epidural and I had been laying in bed, um, the midwife came in and was like, checked me and I was nine centimeters magically. So she was like, in the next hour, I'm gonna come back and you're gonna be able to start pushing. And I was like, oh wow, okay, great. And I had no idea because I'm just like literally laying in a hospital bed at this point and I'm like, oh, okay, totally disconnected from my experience, what was going on within my body. And okay, cool, I'm gonna push out a baby in an hour? Like, I forgot that that's even what I was doing or that that's why I was there, what I was there to do. I totally had no clue what was going on anymore and um, felt very disconnected. And so, yeah, the hour passes, I get to 10 centimeters and okay, you can start pushing now. And I don't even feel my contractions that are telling me that I can push, which is very scary. And I'm looking over at the screen because of course I'm attached to a fetal monitor and I'm looking at the screen and I'm seeing when my body is having the contractions, but I'm not feeling them. There's gotta be like f at least 10 random people in the room at this point. People that I haven't seen the whole night, nurses coming and going. From my waist down, I don't feel my body because I have an epidural. And I'm trying to push 
even though I don't feel anything. And I was pushing, pushing, pushing. And they're like, there's the head. And I'm like, really? Like, I don't feel anything. And then because I was laying on my back, of course, I had to have a vacuum to get her head out because I'm not in the proper position to be like, <laughs> for baby to descend. I, if, I don't even know. I, I pushed her out after that. But I remember there was like one moment where they're all like staring at the screen and they're like, the heart rate's going down. And oh my God, do we have to rush in for a C-section? And I'm like, what's going on? And then that kind of was done. And then she came out and she had the cord wrapped around her neck, totally normal. And, but of course that's like code red in the hospital. We unwrapped the cord. She was actually going like this with the cord and pulling it away from her neck. So babies are genius. Yeah, there was just like a lot of fear. They're like doing this and then, and then the baby's out and it's like, oh my God. You know, it's it was absolutely beautiful. Matisse and I were crying. I felt very, it was an out of body experience. I just remember them bringing her up and she went on my chest and I had said, you know, all these things that I wanted skin to skin contact right away. I wanted delayed cord, cl cord clamping. I wanted all these things. I was very informed about all that kind of stuff. So yeah, and I remember her coming onto my chest and no, and I instinctu instinctually saying to myself, oh, she's good. I knew she was good. And then um, from there, there's a lot of like picking and prodding and they're kind of like, kind of just doing everything that they have to do. Matisse and I found out it was a girl. That was such a beautiful moment. Um, one of the best moments of my life for sure. And then, you know, I had the baby on my chest and then immediately they have to take her away to weigh her and uh, measure her and do all this stuff. That's like, can't you just do that like tomorrow or later or in a couple days? Like, do you really have to do all of this within the first hour? And of course they wanted to cut the cord after oh my God, it's been four or five minutes, so we must cut the cord now. And I was just like, all, again, very, very, very sped up. Yeah, I got to stay in the room for an hour and then it was like, okay, we gotta get out of the room. We gotta transfer you to another room. And they advised that I stay overnight because I she had had the vacuum. So that was like a good idea. And so we did that and I just, it was all very surreal. I felt very disconnected from the actual birth experience and from just like having a baby in general. And in comparison with my home birth, it was like, oh man, I had been in my birthing time for, it had been around like 15 hours or so. I had gone through my transition where I felt really, really, really sleepy. And I actually felt at some parts where I was starting to like fall asleep. And then I'd like wake up and have a good contraction when I was just sitting in the birthing pool, like laying in the birthing pool. I remember this really beautiful, magical moment where I looked over at Matisse and my doula and I said that I felt like I was dying which was just so very accurate because I was, um, the person that I was up until that point was now transitioning into a mother of three and I was about to give birth to twins. And so it was just such a magical moment. I can actually like hear the music that was playing in my head and I can feel the feeling that I felt when I said that. I very shortly after that, I think it would only been about 10 or 15 minutes after I said that, my doula came around and was like, I think I saw something. And I was like, really? And I, I put my hand down and I felt inside of myself and I felt, I felt the sack. And it was like just the best moment ever because I've just been working so hard to get these babies down. And just knowing that I was like almost close to meeting them was just so amazing. And from there on, it was like, all right, let's do this. Yes, all right, cool. Let's go. And I just pushed and pushed and pushed. And I was like, oh, and just, Oh, it felt so good. And finally, just like getting the head out and then the rest of the body. Oh, it was just so magical. It was just like so next level. And there I was just like birthing in my power, like birthing in my space, in my house, just doing it. And no one was saying to me like, oh, you're dilated enough to push now. It was like, I just knew. <laughs> and the baby was there and it was coming out and it was all happening and that was just magical. And so I had the baby in my chest. She immediately started breastfeeding. I of course have like my whole birthing story in another video that you can click to watch here. So I've birthed the first baby and then she right away started breastfeeding which allowed my oxytocin to flow and got my body working to have another contraction to get the second baby out. Genius design. And then the second baby, came down right away, pushed her out like right away, 
and that was within 11 minutes of each other and it was just like so magical. I was just in like in awe of like, I just birthed two babies in water by myself. No one was helping me, caught both of them. I mean, Matisse was like holding the second baby, the first baby that came out when, when after when I was, you know, birthing the second baby. And of course I had like so much help emotionally and, and I felt like I was in such a hammock of support from my support team, but like physically I, and mentally I was doing it all and um, I worked really hard for that birth. I've had a lot of people tell me oh you're so lucky that that you birthed like that but I worked so hard for that birth. It was maybe 10% luck and the rest was choice. Then from there we every single moment of the after the babies came out felt so incredible because it was all um, my natural oxytocin flowing, of course, and me feeling every single thing that's going on in my body and just the connection and connecting. And it was, it was pure, it was pure genius. It was pure magic. You know, all of it was choice. It was like, should, should we get out of the water now? Yeah. Okay. Let's get out of the water now. Okay. Let's move over to the bed. Then we moved over to the bed. I continued to have, um, contractions and, um, my placenta took three hours to come out. Whereas in the hospital, they shot me with a shot of Pitocin so that the placenta would come out right away. I never even felt the placenta come out. And I did save my placenta for my hospital birth and I did have it encapsulated. And then in my birth, um, with um, my home birth, we actually just took the placenta. Well, I didn't, Matisse and Safi did, and they went downstairs with it. Once it came out after three hours, which I, Went into the bathroom, had to stood up and then like coughed <coughs> and then like pulled and it finally came out and it was like so massive because it was two placentas fused together. They went downstairs with it and then they did these like beautiful prints on paper. We actually have it framed in the girl's bedroom of the placenta and like both of them. And you can see the tree of life on the paper, so stunning. And then they just took a chunk out and made a smoothie for me so epic, so chill, was just exactly what I needed. My doula was making me these like beautiful warm teas and just like, I was like getting warm in bed and it just felt so magical and amazing. My mother-in-law came upstairs to hold one of the babies and or to look after both of them and just be there to support us, Safi's here. And it was just such a like beautiful, epic experience. <sighs> It was so magical. And then I had some like warm nourishing food after and everything was just very comfortable and caring and we were in our space. I was right here, <laughs> right here in my bed, in our bed, right here in like where I am all the time. And you know, I was breastfeeding right away and there was the connection and it was just so magical. And in the hospital birth, I started breastfeeding right away and, and there was all of that. It was just that I was in this place where I was very uncomfortable and they were like, again, with the timing and the clock and the clock is running and we gotta go, we gotta move out of here. And you know, they're wheeling me down the hallway and in a wheelchair and and it was so, you know, don't get me wrong, that experience was was such an incredible magical experience in itself. It, it was just very different. You know, in my home, in my space, I was so comfortable. I never thought of like leaving or going anywhere because it was just so, so beautiful. I think it's really amazing to look back at the second birth and realize, at my home birth and realize that I actually have zero trauma from my birth. I actually thought before I had a home birth that it was normal to have a level of trauma in your birth because that's all you see from movies and TV and from people's stories. I had this deeply ingrained belief that having a traumatic birth or to have things not go your way was normal. I think that it is, again, so important to choose wisely of who you have at your birth and choose wisely where you want to give birth because those two factors, <laughs> two factors make such a big difference in terms of how your birth is going to unfold. No matter where you give birth, just know that you have choices no matter what, even if you feel like you don't, you can make informed choices yourself and know that you are sovereign in your body. This is your birth. These are, this is your baby. This is your you are the gatekeeper to your birth and you can birth however you want and however you choose. Even though that doesn't seem to be the narrative that is portrayed, that is actually the real truth and that is how birth... Um... Hi, my love! 
that is how birth is supposed to happen is on your terms. Postpartum, I definitely felt very like something was wrong with my body, something was broken. I even asked my doula afterwards, after my hospital birth, what happened? Like, why did it go down that way? I didn't want it to go down that way. Why did I end up having all these interventions that I didn't want to have? And she told me not to think about it and just move on with my life. And I felt very unempowered a postpartum because my birth, in my birth I felt so unempowered. I definitely felt unempowered postpartum. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't trust in myself. I didn't trust in my inner, inner wisdom because a lot of that has been stripped away from us as time has evolved. I think the intuition of birthing has been, yeah, taken away. With my postpartum, with my home birth, I was like, felt, felt very in tune with making my own choices even just when it came down to cutting the cord from the placenta, I was like, yeah, no, I want to do that right now. And, and you know, it was like my choice, my decision. And I knew that that was the right choice. I knew my babies were good. I knew that I didn't need any kind of external advice that we have so relied on. And that's what I mean about our losing our intuition is that that since we are always looking for external advice, that intuition has basically is like a flame that's that's totally dim and almost burnt out because we we don't feed it enough to to trust it and to know that that flame of intuition is still there and that it is the more we trust it, the stronger it becomes and the more that we know that we can believe and trust in our body's ability to function the way that it's supposed to. That was basically my experiences from the the two very different times that I've birthed. Birth is magical no matter how it happens. It is birth and it is seriously a miracle on this earth to be able to give birth and oh babies are crying or oh, my sappy's here. I was just talking about you and your birth. The most important message is that I want to share is always know that you are sovereign, you are free, you are a genius design, you know exactly what you're doing, and and um, <laughs> so much. And just know that choice, choice, you have choices. Everybody's got choices and that become informed with your own body. Trust your intuition and um, you got this. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already subscribed, can you say subscribe? Subscribe. 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 Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> hit that subscribe button. <laughs> and like and share this video and I will see you I will see you next week can you say ciao for now